Yes. Oh. All right, Neil. Hey, congratulations for last night in Rossi. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you you know what? You're such a versatile actor. You know, you, you you play all these different types of roles. What attracted you, you know, to a project like uh, Last Night in Rossi? I mean, is is this something different you have done before? Um, it's my first lead uh, uh, where I was number one on the call sheet. Um, it um, when I got the script, uh, it just really well. I got the offer, and then I got the script. Um, and I had my wife and my, and my niece actually read it because I had been getting some scripts that weren't, weren't, the, weren't, weren't my cup of tea. Um, and so I, I let them read it first and within 10 minutes, they had both burst through my room. Um, and they were just, they were like, what's going on here? I, I, I'm excited about this. I, I, I'm in love with this. I want to, um, uh, I'm excited about it. I go, well, what's going on here? You got to do this this project and I'm like okay cool so then I got to read it and I just fell in love with it because it was a very human story it was a story about trauma um I wasn't running around with a gun uh and I wasn't kicking anybody in the forehead uh which <laughs> which I dug um and it was a, just a real difference and I have been wanting to play like you know a character like that just a you know a human that had a lot of levels to it and on the outside he was so very well put together um but then there was a lot of a, a lot more going on in the surface. Did um did you have to go into a different headspace? Uh, you know, playing playing a lead in a in a film or a lead in any type of project where you know what 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 was going through your head? You know, when you when you basically be be uh, you know Ronnie Russo here. Um, I go through a, a, a different headspace. I I, I did this. I have a whole process that I do with any character that I play, obviously with, with characters that I've played for a lot longer. Um, I have to do less because I've kind of like put on that skin and already know it. Uh, for, for this character, Ronnie, I had a very short time to get ready. I was real stressed out because it was my birthday too. And um, I, I figured that he had enough layers of, of life and trauma that I needed to really spend a good amount of time with it. Um, so I kind of drew on some of my own personal experiences um, and did a lot of my research. Like I've always did anything I've done. Dude, Straight Outta Compton really helped that <clears throat> a lot because of how I had to study to become yellow. I do that with all the, with all the characters. So uh, it wasn't a different headspace. Uh, he was a lonely, obsessively a lonely guy. So I had to kind of go in that place, which is really hard when you have a beautiful wife that's around all the time. So I was like, you need to leave me alone. You got to be by myself. You know, my <laughs> dark head space, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it was really funny is because uh, you was wa watching, uh, you know, the film and I was going, gosh, I, I don't know if Neil realizes, but he's not built like a lawyer, obviously. Uh, for <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, that's why I told him, I was like, no fitted suits. Let's try to be as loose as we can. I, I was like, I'm not going to be able to get rid of my shoulders at this point. So <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Well, it, it'll make it work. He's different. You know, he's like trying to be extra well put together or whatever, even though I'm built more like a Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, when one of the things about uh, your character is that uh, he, he, he wore the same outfit uh, throughout the entire film. Yeah. Is, is, did, did they just have one outfit for you or did they just have you know, well, he actually, he had a, well, first of all, I'm trying to find something that fit right um, for, for, for me. That's why I have to get everything fitted. Uh, thin waist, wide, you know, wide shoulders, not a, a terribly tall person. So you're not going to the big and tall store for me. Um, uh, but they had a great department and they had all the stuff. But the, the, the idea was that Ronnie, the idea was that Ronnie, he didn't have time to do the things that were his normal routine and he was just kind of like caught up and still trying to leave and like you know like you know you plan like okay i'm gonna go back to the hotel i'm gonna go back to the apartment take a shower and stuff like that but then you're like oh i gotta go do this one thing well i'll do it when i get back and then you're like oh no no i'll do it when i get you know i'm not even gonna do it i'm just gonna drive back to new york because i'm going home tonight i'm not even gonna change you know it was one of those things but then you're like oh i don't i didn't drive back to new york so you know it's just one of those things that kind of show that like he was falling down kind of in this <laughs> remember the movie falling down it's like yeah. he didn't change either it was all <laughs> it's like, 
Um, uh, so it kind of lent to what he was going through. There were like there were two changes that he did. He did change, but they were very similar. And then I remember the wardrobe lady saying they're, they're going to look like they're not going to look. It's not going to look like he changed. And I was like, I don't care. I like this color. <laughs> and so she was right and I was wrong <laughs> but uh but yeah I think that was part of like showing that he didn't have time to really you know pay that attention to that part of himself that would normally be part of the armor that he would put on right yeah that that's true I was uh working with uh you know I'm Jeremy um I was telling a, a co-worker of mine that 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 was like the best performance I've seen Jeremy lying down uh, for quite some time <laughs> he did great oh bro it was great you know he just laid there and just had a great time <laughs> it was great now he, he I, I learned a lot from him we had a lot of fun um we meshed it, it you know it, it happened right away um Richard Schiff um one of my good friends and like an actor who I'm just a, a huge fan of and I love him to death he taught me a lot about creating this a sense of brotherhood, a sense of friendship that looks like it's been for years and years of history without having those years and being having just had met. He taught me a lot about being a partner, um, especially in a scene. Uh, and I've used that. I've used that in all my shows. I've like, <laughs> interestingly enough, after working with Chef, I became the like, the, the buddy too, <laughs> like in all my movies, like I have some very close friendship, me and David Boreanaz, me and, and Jeremy Sista, uh, me and Richard Shipp. It's always been that, you know, subsequently from working with him, it's, it's, it's been that way. So I've used it a lot. And so um, I use a lot of those techniques with uh, Jeremy and he <laughs> used some of the same. Um, so, you know, you can see that and feel that history immediately, even though uh, he and I, I think at first, our first meeting we were doing that scene do you do you do uh bonding out outside of uh the set uh with your with your co-workers uh um sometimes just just to get the little bit of the chemistry right no i don't force it um i don't like oh we gotta hang out da, 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 da. i just hang out because i hang out i mean i'm an actor i'll pretend <laughs> you know I, I, I play pretend for a living i'm a big kid and the thing about kids is when they're playing a great game of pretend they're not worrying about like are we friends outside of this or you know what I mean like it's, it's they kind of just like get after it um fortunately I've been very blessed that uh I vibe with everyone I work with so we do end up hanging out outside of set and do uh creating a a, a, a bond um especially when that bond has to live on uh you know each week Mm -hmm. for every day um you can't help but be cool otherwise it's it's gonna be toxic um so jeremy and i we did have some time outside of it um had you know grab a beer um talk meshed realize that there was nothing to there was nothing to force i mean it was all kind of there so it's there on the page and if you have two actors that really like like the writing then everything will happen as it's supposed to happen but um, I've been fortunate enough, yeah, that I do get to hang out with uh, the, many of my co-stars outside of work. Not mm -hmm. insane, not all the time, but because everybody's like, you know, yeah. fortunately very busy. But we do have a good time. Excuse me. That's okay. Um, with with Jeremy, because I because I met him. He's he's a very funny guy. Was was there a little bit of improv, or or is he just a? He just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He uh, w when it comes to stuff like that. I kind of let this sensei go before. So the one who has gone before me, right? So Jeremy's been doing, he was doing this before me. He's been doing it at that level, at this level before me. Um, David's been doing it at the level before me. Richard's been doing this level before me. I, I, I enter everything as a student. Even if I, because uh, you can't know everything. If you know everything, just get out of this life right now because you're done, <laughs> right? Just what's the point of being here, right? So I always go in as an empty cup. And I always let the, for the most part, I always let the the sense that the, the one who was going before the older or the koha <clears throat> or the senpai, excuse me, go before me. Um, so if he wanted to riff, I let him riff and then I just feed off of him because I'm good. I'm a good look when it comes to that. I'll, I'll always be able to go. But I'm a big, like, <laughs> I want to get what's on the page. So I'll riff and I let 
whoever it is, especially it happens with David all the time, I let them riff, 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 and then I just draw them right back into the scripted lines. And, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and it's like, and that way the writer's happy and we're happy as actors because we had a good time. It kept it real, kept it light. It's more important to be uh, present, not perfect. But I am a stickler for words. I think they're very important and I, and I like writers. Um, and if they took the time to write it, I want to take the time to, to get it right. So, um, yes, but then your question, uh, yes, he did at will. Quite a few things. Like here, that's the whole thing, like with the with the neighboring sick guy. That's all Jeremy just messing around. I mean, I, 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 I figured there was I figured there was there was a lot of personality of Jeremy in, into his character. So I I, I I could tell, especially how you guys interacted and cussed each other out once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and and you know, and also that was that was part of Ronnie and uh that was probably Ronnie and Joy. The, the thing that they had, like, since they were kids, is like, it's like the, the, ch the kid versions of us. Uh, uh, they used to the curse each other out, if you notice, like, in the flashback scenes as well. So it kind of mirrored that. But it was also just like kind of a natural, natural thing. Um, so we did have a lot of fun. Yeah. Great. Well, I, I don't want to forget your other co stars, uh, Nikki and um, um, little, uh, the little boy James there. Could you talk about them a bit uh, working with Yeah, them? definitely. Yeah. They're all, uh, oh my God, Nikki. Nikki was so awesome. She, she's a very special actress. Um, real tough, you know, um, real tough chick. She's strong, uh, actor's actor. You know, she came in ready to, ready to get after it, ready to go. Um, there's always that scene that we have when, <laughs> when she catches, uh, when, you know, towards the end, when the big blow up happens between them and, and when she came, she came after me, which was great. She's like, why would you do that? And I'm like, how would you know what he wants? I was like, you can hear in the audience all the time, people go, ooh. And it's like, I was like, uh, she turned into my wife for a second. Um, she was great. She was phenomenal. Uh, and she gave so much. And uh, James, the kids, all, both the kids actually, uh, the kids who played the young versions of us and then, her, the uh, kid James Gaffney, who played her son, uh, they were all really, really hungry and ready to, you know, to to work. Which you know we had to too. We had a very short, very tight schedule, um, very little money, and uh, everybody had to be on their game. That's the independent filmmaking of it all. And uh, everybody, you know, shined. I mean, you know, Ryan, or producer Ryan, and. Um, Sean Gannett, the director, uh, they just kind of created an atmosphere for us all to to do our best, and I think we did. Do you, Do you enjoy um, you know doing these indie projects once in a while? You know, compared to like you know your big production like a t television show. I love acting, man. I love acting. I love playing pretend. I'm I'm just a big old kid, and and I, I love it in in all its shapes and forms. But particularly, particularly when it's good, even when it's bad, because it learns something from it, right? Mm -hmm. You learn something from that. You learn something from it being awesome. You learn something from being like this very small piece in this huge production. And you also learn something from being this big piece in this very small production. Um, and you realize there's actually not much difference. It's just in how you perceive it and how you react to it. And in all of that big, small, little part, little part, it's your ability to do the work, your ability to 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 lose yourself in the 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 childness of it all like mm -hmm. you know it's a it's a pampered existence it's it's all good it's all icing on a very decadent cake so i have fun doing it all um as long as the story is good i mean like and it makes sense and there's a rhythm right and even in the stuff that isn't quite right there's this beautiful um discovery in uh figuring out how to make it work Figuring out how to make it feel right, figuring out how to find a rhythm where there is none. That's magic, man. That's what we that's if you do this this thing, that's what you live for. I mean, because the, the money, you know, will come and it will go. <laughs> you know, you gotta love something more about this than like getting paid and you know, getting a lot of food at craft food. Love love that passion. Um, as a West Coaster, one of the things that was like a question on my mind is. What's what's Rossi? Is that, is that mm -hmm. a neighborhood? Rossi? Is R that a Rossi? Rosendale. Rossi oh. is Rosendale in Boston. 
And um, <clears throat> and Bos- it, it was it's the city that he's from. So Rozzy is the shorthand, you know, is the um, is the nickname for a kid from Rosendale. You know, he's a Rozzy kid. Rozzy, <laughs> you know, it's uh, um, uh, just like uh, you know, the, like the BX. You know what I'm saying? Or the boogie down. You know, it's just like it's just a short a short hand for it. Oh wow, lots of nicknames over there on the on the East Coast. That's that's for sure. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, Neil, let, let me uh, start uh, wrapping things up because I know I don't want to take up too much of a of your of your sure, Saturday, sure. but but uh, but I do. I I know I, I'm going to feel like I'm I'm from Men's Health asking asking you, but how are you keeping in shape during this entire time? You know, during the pandemic, while the rest of us is averaging fifty pounds of weight. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, this is a filter. <laughs> this is a filter on your camera. I got it, dude. You, dude, fifty nine ninety five. You just buy the filter. It just fixes everything as you even walk through life. Uh, <laughs> no, I um, I'm, I, I uh, um, uh, one of the very important things I am is about being a whole person. Is having mental, physical, spiritual, uh, emotional, uh, physical health, a uh, health. And, you know, you need all, as martial arts, you know, you need, you have to be an artist in all rounds. You, you find that, um, that you have to have balance and I'm constantly looking for, for, for balance. Um, too much of anything makes you an addict, right? So, you know, you need something to be able to wear to balance out the scales. And um, I've worked out since I was a little itty bitty kid, since like four years old, uh, in some shape, form or fashion. Um, so with with this, I'm always trying to go to the next level to to, to do better. Um, and I, I started working, uh, I started working on the um, uh, Y3T program, which is Yoda Three Training, uh, by Neil Hill. He's a famous um, uh, bodybuilder uh, slash uh, trainer, and I was always a big fan of his. And so I did his program to get in shape for Seal Day, and he hit me up. And he said, anytime you want to do it for real, let's go. And I was like, I've never had, like, I had Eric, uh, the trainer who trained me for a photo shoot one time, but I've never really had a trainer. And I started working with him and I got really serious about my diet. Um, it's very clean, um, very serious, got real serious about my mental health, a lot of therapy, all that stuff, because I think everybody needs it. I think even if you don't need it, you especially need it. Um, so I've just been doing a, all of that. We've just been making sure that, um, the boxes are checked in those ways, and then I'm feeling healthy, um, and then I, you know, I feel good. And, and and physically, as a fighter, like growing up, I still need to be able to move. Um, you, I don't want to get old and tight, <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, uh, that that's what I've been doing. I've been working with Neil Hill, you know, and uh, just really focusing on uh, health all around. So thank you, for, thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very noticeable. So you know. Have to have to compliment you on that, and and one more thing before you like I, I let you go. Obviously, seal seal team and you know n- another another exciting uh, season for a seal team. Mm-hmm. Or, what 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 should we expect for our for Ray, your your character? Um, an evolution. Um, I think overall a positive evolution. Um, I think uh, like all these characters, they're gonna uh, you know they evolve into something. That is this. That is the same, but a, a, a little, a little different. Like, and those differences can be good, or those differences, those differences can be good or bad. I think for the most part, his differences or his change, his evolution is going to be good. I think you're going to see things from him and Naima, um, and how they repair the things that they went through and how they um, endure through it. I think you'll see much of the same way you'll see how he endures with the team um, and, and the evolution of, of the team because. I mean, they've been at it a long time, and uh, it can't go forever. The train, the train keeps going, but they don't. So um, it's going to be definitely exciting, and I think the drama, uh, the, the the thriller aspect of it, will be enhanced, um, and there'll be a lot of drama within that. So uh, I think people are going to be in for a wild ride, especially those four the first four episodes going to be kind of <laughs> crazy, and then it's just going to get amped up as we go to Paramount Plus. Like going into that fifth episode, there's a big, big cliffhanger. So um, we'll be on episode four at CBS. And then that night, uh, it'll be available. Five will be available on Paramount Plus. So for those who like, like can't wait, like ah, press play. <laughs> I know you're 
that that show is so addicting. But uh, but real real fast, why why do you think fans love Navy Seal so much? What what's the secret to the success of the show that you think? Um, I I believe because they seem very apolitical. Um, they're just kind of like <laughs> our ultimate public servants. Uh, people like the hero. The um, and in and, and a lot of ways, the underdog, although Navy SEALs are not the underdog, we have all the cool toys. Uh, but but people like knights and shining armor and, and those guys that stand on the wall and they, they, they put on that armor and they protect us while we sleep. I, I think ultimately, um, you know, people can look to them and, and, and be, feel protected. You know, people like that feeling of daddy or mommy. You know, and it, and it feels like these guys are our our brothers, our mothers, our sisters, our fathers, who are out there um, making sure that that we are safe. That that's a great answer. Well, Neil, hey, I really appreciate you uh, logging on and carrying this conversation with us. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so sorry for being late. <laughs> for you know, you know, it's it's all it's all good. I I, I just uh, you know enjoy uh, listening to you and have. Hear, hearing you talk about uh, your love of pretending and you, 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 the love of your craft, this is terrific. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, ho- hopefully we get to do this next time. Thanks a yes, lot. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, brother. Oh. All right. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, it got cut off. She said that was uh, <laughs> all. all right, brother. See ya. Take care.